surviving, you're trying to sneak away in, but you want every opportunity to do. Oh! Good fighters, great fights. That's the mantra over at ProBox TV. The first Wednesday night of November, but of course every other Wednesday night, we come to you live on your boxing channel from our world headquarters in Tampa, Florida. This is Pro Box TV. We don't promote boxers, we promote boxing. And we get things started tonight with a four round super featherweight matchup. 5-0 G-Baby from the Queen City of Cincinnati. Michael Gamble, who just turned 22 on Monday, is set to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with 29-year-old Brazilian Carlos Roca, who's set to fight here in the United States for the second time. Like his opponent, he makes his Pro Box TV debut. Our co-main event is scheduled for 10 rounds for the WBA Continental North America Featherweight Belt. The former WBO Super Bantamweight World Champion, 21-1, Angelo Leo against a longtime member of the Dominican Republic's national team, Nicholas Polanco, who returns to Pro Box TV, but fights at 126 pounds for the first time in six years. Our main event of the evening is also scheduled for 10 rounds. This one for the WBA Continental America's welterweight belt. Detroit's Janelson Boca Chica, who started boxing at the world-famous Kronk Gym and handed Mark Reyes Jr. his first professional loss. His opponent, Alberto Palmetta, who represented his home country of Argentina at the 2016 Olympic Games. He is a bona fide finisher, as 11 of his last 12 wins have come by knockout. Hi again, everybody. I'm Mike Goldberg, of course, joined by my powerful partners, the former two-time world champion, the magic man, Pauli Molinaggi, former world champion, Chris Algieri. Let's talk Boca Chica for a second. Mom and dad, Puerto Rican. He lives in a suburb in Detroit, which is right by Mexican town in Detroit, Michigan. I'd say he was born to be a boxer. He used to be in the Kronk gym as well, right? Yes. So you know what? You got all the, the recipe for a good sauce there, as we like to say in the Italian culture. The recipe <laughs> for a good sauce. But I'll tell you what, he's a... a a solid technical boxer, a bit of a counter puncher, sometimes have a t has a tendency to weigh just a little bit. You know what? At this point in time, he's got the skills to get there. It's, it's the moment to, to now fight for that moment. And, and Palmetta might be the kind of guy he needs, to, if he can get by him, to really give him that recognition. He's got the solid win over Reyes, who was undefeated at the time. But he needs wins like this, and he's got to get going now. And it's the time. And tonight, he's got a big opportunity. His promoter, Dimitri Salida, says he is one of the America's top prospects we will see of course he's the promoter so he's got a lot of confidence in his fighter also confident is Alberto Palmetto who has met Roy Jones Jr. Mike Tyson and Chris Algieri I'm sure he was the happiest when he got to meet you partner I'd like to think so but <laughs> <laughs> Now, Paul, you mentioned what this this a win here would mean for Boca Chica. A win here for Palmetto is a big a big step too. He's a two-fisted banger, southpaw from Argentina. Really likes to put the pressure on. He's been wreaking havoc in South Florida gyms. I've been knowing him for about him for years, so I know he's going to be very prepared for this fight. It's going to be an all-action affair, just like every Pro Box TV main event. It, it always is. We are on a roll every other Wednesday. And Paul, it's interesting that Chris says that about Palmetto because in the fighter meetings, his coach said exactly that. We asked, "What's his best punch?" He says the one he throws. And that's and that's exactly why Boca Chica really sh can't afford to wait too much. You know, he's, he's, got, he's very good technically. He can walk Palmetta into a lot of traps, but he's got to stay busy. He's got to stay sharp, and he's got to keep that those punches in gear. Waiting too long will make Palmetta comfortable getting on the inside, and that's what Palmetta wants to be. Palmetta wants to be in the inside, and obviously Boca Chica wants to get his arm raised. It should be a great main event. Not one, but two belts on the line here tonight on your boxing channel, Pro Box TV. But we get things started with that promised four-round matchup featuring Cincinnati, Ohio's own Michael Gamble as he takes on the 29-year-old Brazilian Carlos Roca. Our tail of the tape for this super featherweight matchup. The 22-year-old three inches taller than his opponent 
he will also have the reach advantage. Four round fight to get things started in the super featherweight division. With the official introductions, let's get it up to the one, the only, Mark Lichtenfeld. Ladies and gentlemen, from the Pro Box TV Event Center, this bout is scheduled for four rounds in the super featherweight division. Your judges for this contest, Joanne Richard, Dennis Debon, and Brian Gary. Your referee in charge is Christopher Young. Introducing to you first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing the black with gold. He weighed in at 127.8 pounds with a record of three wins, one loss, with two wins by knockout from Bahia, Brazil. Please welcome Carlos Rocha. And fighting out of the red corner, wearing the white with gold. He weighed in at 127.6 pounds. He is undefeated with a record of five wins, no losses, with three wins by knockout. From Cincinnati, Ohio, he is Michael G-Baby Gamble. Okay, gentlemen, everything up here will consider legal. Everything up here will consider legal. You see instructions just for me. It's been a tough clean fight. Give my commands all the time. Pick to the subs all the time. Touch them up. Set for four rounds in the super featherweight division. Michael Gamble, just 22 years old, against the 29 year old Brazilian Carlos Andre dos Santos Roca. Red corner, you ready? Blue corner, you ready? Bail! Here we go! It's time to fight. White and gold trunks for Gamble. The Southpaw, Roca with the name on the front of his black and gold trunks. Gamble is 5-0 and oh with three finishes. Roca 3-1 and one with two knockouts. Gamble with a nice sharp left hand there, countering Roca on the way in. Roca's got to be careful the way he steps in. Gamble in that counter-punching mode, looking to take charge. Gamble, the southpaw, doing a very good job keeping that foot on the outside. Looking for that jab there, that stab jab to the heart. I like those fringes on Gamble, too. A little bit of sense of style, a little flesh. Touch of Paulie Manaji in there, a little magic man. <laughs> you, know, you know, when I was in the amateurs, we used to go to the Nationals, and we used to, as, when you're young, you used to judge people on how they were dressed. Like, like we used to see a guy with basic outfit, he goes, that guy can't fight. <laughs> so, judge Gamble by his outfit, you know what, he can fight. And he kinda, you can kind of see the, the sort of the pizzazz in, in, his, in his boxing style. Roca's trying to get in there, Gamble looking to catch him coming. Gamble has been mentored by Jamel Herring, the former WBO junior lightweight champion. Wow, that's, a, that's an excellent southpaw to have as a mentor. You got that right. And of course, one of your favorite boxers, Paulie, from Cincinnati, Ohio. Um, Adrian. Like me. Yeah, somebody, yeah. right? <laughs> You know what, when you're from Cincinnati, you know, those are the kind of guys you're going to look up to, guys that have been there and done it before. Absolutely. I will say, even when I was in the amateur, Cincinnati always had an excellent amateur boxing team. Yep. And there's a lot of the times in the pros that ain't paying out. Until this oh, oh, nice shot there. Right on left cue, hand. Ball. Right on cue. Right on left. What a left hand. Oh, yeah, he's oh. One punch stop is going to be. Eight. It is all over. Just like that. Cincinnati does have some stick. Say until the last generation, when the 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 Broners and the, and, and the Robert Easters and uh, who's the the, the flyweight go, uh, gold uh, Olympian, two-time Olympian, uh, I got his name now, two-time Olympian, little guy from Cincinnati, he'll come back to me. But those guys, those guys, he's a world champion too. He lost to Piano, lost his world title to Piano. Uh, 
He, Gamble did a great job setting this punch up. He had an excellent lead hand. A southpaw with a right hand, that lead hand is good. He's a very dangerous man. He was setting up that left hand all night long. Beautiful right hand over the top, a straight left hand down the middle. And I was saying earlier in the, in the round, I was saying that Roca wants to fly in there, but Gamble's trying to catch him coming. And sure enough, he caught him coming. Yeah. And, you know, give it, give, tip your hat to Roca. He was trying to get up. He was trying to continue, but he was very hurt. Beautiful shot. Rashi Warren is the other one I was looking for. Rashi Warren. So until Rashi that generation Warren. with Issa yep. Broner and Rashi Warren, the Cincinnati generations were always very good in the amateurs, but didn't pay it out in the pros. And uh, now you're starting to see them really make some noise in the pros as well. And who knows, man, we may see a lot more of Gamble. Gamble, Mike really, Kel really Gamble. performance. Just made now some noise here in Pro Box TV. of his career finishes have come in the very first round. I, 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 I'm not surprised. He hit that left hand beautifully, set it up with the lead hand, came out fast, jabbing to the body, setting up different levels, changes, nice angle movement, and then bang, dropped that left hand like a hammer. And you know what? Stylish. Yeah. Stylish, yeah. Profile. Well, he lived up to what you said. He's got a nice outfit yeah. so he can fight. Yeah. <laughs> Confident, good talker, even at a young age. Very humble young man. But yes, when asked about Cincinnati with his coach, Levi Smith, and oh, by the way, he trains at the Cincinnati Golden Gloves gym, he did talk about the fact that, I know I'm a Cincinnati kid, Paulie, but he did talk about the fact that there are some great gyms, some great sparring, and some great boxers, and we got ourselves a heck of a prospect in Michael Gamble, winner by knockout to get things started on a Wednesday night on your boxing channel. You are watching Pro Box TV. Michael told us in the fighter meetings that he likes to set stuff up, and Chris, you alluded to that. Yeah, absolutely. He's using that right hand beautifully early in the round, jabbing high, jabbing low. Kept his angles, fought on, on a bladed stance, on staying outside that lead foot. I, I call that staying invisible, staying outside of his opponent's counterattacks. Beautifully set up left hand. Roca didn't see it coming, and you see it, he's super hurt, trying to get up. Tried his best, but too much damage was done with that left hand. Michael Gamble moves to 6-0 and oh with four finishes. Just 22 years old to make it official, Mark Lichtenfeld. Ladies and gentlemen, this contest comes to a halt at two minutes, one second of the first round. Your winner by knockout and still undefeated, Michael G. Baby. Gamble tremendous in the two minutes and one second that he spent in the ring in his Pro Box TV debut. G Baby, Michael Gamble. Don't forget, later tonight, our main event of the evening. And it is for a belt. As always, it's for the belt, the WBA, Continental America's welterweight belt. It is Palmetta and Boca Chica. And Janelson spoke with our own Chris Algieri moments ago. Chris Algieri here with Pro Box TV. I'm here with Janelson Figueroa Boca Chica ahead of his main event on Wednesday night fight series on Pro Box TV. How are you feeling there, young man? Man, uh, I'm excited. I'm super happy for this fight to be on Pro Box. Yeah, this is great. Have you been following the, the, the Pro Box TV cards and, you know, what to expect with these kinds of fights? Yeah, yeah, for sure. And, uh, man, I'm just, I'm just so happy to be here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 
what what uh what does a win here do for you? What's next? Where where are we looking? Oh man, a, a win here is great for me, and you know, putting me back on the rankings, and um, I just want to get the best fights I can. Mm -hmm. You had a you had an excellent win against Mark Reyes Jr., who is a ProBox TV alum. Yeah. Uh, that was on a Showtime card, which now a Showbox card now the Showtime is no longer around. How does it feel to know that you've had a win on that on that air, and what has now become a legendary place? Yeah, um, it feels great, and that was actually one of the fights I was most excited for, and now it's this one, mm -hmm. and I've been training hard, I've been focused, and I'm just mentally and physically prepared. That's excellent. That, that's excellent. Uh, tell me about your opponent. What uh, have you have you done much research? Are you are you prepared for for what he what he brings? Yeah, um, I hope he's uh, prepared for me, and um, yeah, I've seen a couple of his fights, and I've seen that he's a guy that comes forward and he likes to fight, so um, you know that's that's even better for me because. He, that's how you run into a knockout fighting me. Yeah, I mean, you're another guy that likes to uh, likes to really bring it. So this yeah. this might be an all action shootout. We're very much looking forward to it. Good luck in your Pro Box TV debut. Thank you. And looking forward to seeing you work. Thank you. I appreciate it. Anything you want to tell your fans out there? Uh, don't miss it. All right, tune in Pro Box TV Wednesday night fight series. We will not miss it. That is for certain. That is our main event of the evening. Later tonight, Janelson Boca Chica, Alberto Palmetta, Chris Algieri, the magic man, Paulie Molinaggi. Very humble, but you can see that quiet confidence as you spoke to Boca Chica. Yeah, I mean, that's one of those things. When you talk to a guy right before a fight, you could get a lot of his aura looking in his eye. I felt that he's definitely prepared tonight. He knows what's on the line. I think he's going to bring it. I think we had a really good main event on our hands. He describes himself as an aggressive technique. Paulie. Well, I, I think he's the kind of guy, he likes to set things up. He's not going to get aggressive unless he's, he's setting out the right way. He can walk you into shots. He can lead at times if, if, if you're going to get a little bit reckless. But he, sometimes he does have a tendency to wait too long. So he needs, he's going to need to be either aggressive an aggressive technician or he's going to have to be sharp with his counter punches tonight. Or a combination of both. A combination of both is what we'll probably, at least in his mind, he hopes to display. I think that would be most effective against Palmetto. Palmetto's one of those guys, if you let him get comfortable, he's going to stay in front of you and bang it like right. a heavy bang. He hits hard with both hands. He likes it. He'll square up at times on the inside. He is a southpaw and he'll rip both hands. I mean, he believes in the power that he has in, in either hand. So it makes him a very dangerous opponent. Trained by his father, Nelson Figueroa, at the downtown boxing gym in Detroit. But he got his start at the world famous Kronk Gym, Paul. Well, you know what? If, you, if you're in Detroit, you didn't yeah. really start in the Kronk Gym. What are you doing in Detroit boxing? You got that right. Well, if you notice in the, in the interview, he's tall. He's yes. My, I was surprised at how tall he is. So, coming from the Kronk Gym, where a lot of really good yeah. tall fighters came from, uh, so we might see some of that Tommy Hearns Kronk style gym in there as well. And creative parenting in naming their son. Father is Nelson. Mama is Janice, thus Janelson Boca Chica. Rightfully so, he's a combination of the two. There you go, there That's you cool. go. Both from Puerto Rico. So he's got the Puerto Rican blood. He lives right near Mexican town in Detroit. And it's Detroit, Michigan that uh, has had a few good boxers. It's a hell of a lot of good boxing all yeah. put together. Yeah, he's got all the attributes, as you talked about, Paulie, at the top of the show. His opponent, the Argentinian, the Olympian, Alberto Palmetta, is going to be a handful for not just Boca Chica, but he's a handful for everyone. Yeah, he's an aggressive guy, and he, he's, he's a fun guy to watch. Right. You know, he's, he's a, he's a TV-friendly fighter. Uh, uh, and, and, you know, Chris Champ has probably seen him training more than, more than I have as he's in the gym with him as well. So I think these are the kind of guys you need for TV fights. It is good these are the kind of guys we like to have on Pro Box TV. And I think stylistically, the two styles are really going to blend well and mesh together. As is, as is typical to see on Pro Box TV. Yeah, the Pro Box TV matchmakers know what they're doing. Yes, they do. Yes, they do. As they have the 2016 Olympian in our main event of the evening. Every other Wednesday, we are right here live on Pro Box TV. Wednesday night fights on your boxing channel. We'll be here the 15th, November 29th. And then we will be here Wednesday, December 13th. What a great year it has been here on Pro Box TV. That was a slightly talked about fight in Saudi Arabia over the weekend and um, some interesting storylines that came out of it, Paulie. Oh, yeah, I'll say that. <laughs> That's say for the sure. least. <laughs> I, I think uh, surprising, but shocking. And uh, even some positive stuff. I tell you what, Francis Ngannou really uh, showed up and showed out. He did indeed. Tyson Fury took a lot of criticism. Was he out of shape? Was did too much time off? 
there were a lot of factors that went into it, but I think more than anything, we saw that Francis is taking this boxing thing seriously. Hey, Francis is a is a serious boxer and a guy that I think other heavyweights are now looking at, and he's becoming a prime suspect for for a lot of other fighters, other a lot of other heavyweights in the world today. And I'm looking forward to seeing him back in a boxing ring, not a cage. He's yes. the most expensive all-in-one guy you'll find. That, that <laughs> is very, very, very <laughs> You want to see him box again, you got to pay him. Yep. That, that's very true, and pretty sure he got paid a moment ago. So let's check out more on the big fight between the Gypsy King and an MMA King here in our deep waters. This stuff ain't crazy no more, and Ganyu had that kind of performance, so he might be the best opponent for Jared Anderson right now. And I'll throw out another crazy thing. And again, it's not crazy anymore because Daniel stepped over the threshold. He he took us to a place we didn't think we would be taken to. But in Ganyu's, can anyone argue with me right now? And to the point of Paulie, I get the reals bill, the real bill, where we got to see him after this and see him, you know, with a, with a, heavyweight that had time mentally to know what he was getting ready for. Fury really, yeah, I'm taking nothing away from Ngannou. Great performance. But Fury didn't have time mentally to really know what he was really facing. Face a heavyweight that has time to know, now I'm fighting so legit, see what happens then. But can anyone argue with me here that right now this crazy statement lies true? And here's the statement. His technique is better than the former heavyweight champ, Wilder. His technique, his te and he can punch. His technique is better than Wilder's. So I guess I answered your question there. Uh, yeah, he, right now, you know, anything, anything is up for grabs. <laughs> everything, everything is possible. It was entertaining to say the least. We get set now for our co-main event of the evening 10 round featherweight matchup for the WBA Continental North America belt 24 and 1 Nicholas Polanco back here on Pro Box TV to face off against 21 and 1 Angelo Leo Angelo Leo is a high pressure high volume fighter Nine knockouts, which means he really does, Chris, like to put the punches and bunches together. Yeah, I mean, he's a former world champion. His only loss is to one of the best fighters in the world, Stephen uh, Fulton. So uh, he's a very, very talented guy. And uh, listen, in terms of the level of, of fighters that we've had here, this is one of the best fighters that we've had on our air. Uh, he's been out of the ring for a little bit, so looking forward to seeing him back doing what he's so good at. Fulton was victorious over him in a 12-round unanimous decision, Paulie. But it came about six months off of a title defense. Now, I'm not saying it might have been different, but Angelo Leo is for real. No, Angelo Leo's for real. And again, to have that as your only loss, listen, Fulton yeah. is a bona fide top level guy, you know? So, so Leo, you know, trying to get back on track, trying to climb his way back to that level. And, and this is where you come. You come to Pro Box. You get these, try to get these big wins here and move on to the bigger fights. And when you look at Nicholas Polanco, he is fighting at 126 pounds for the first time in six years. Unfortunate in his fight against Hobson um, Conceição. Mm -hmm. I wanted to say Concepcion because I'm in this Cincinnati <laughs> mood. Sorry, Hobson. The blame accidental gamble. headbutt. Blame yeah. Gamble. Yes, blame Gamble for being <laughs> Houday. But he showed significant skills, which is why he's back again in his time that he's been in our Pro Box TV ring. Yeah, absolutely. He makes for good good fights. He's he's shown skills. He's got uh, the pedigree. And uh, you know what? He belongs in this matchup. And that's why we're about to watch it. Absolutely. He has fought Arboleta, Albert Bell, who was 21-0, lost a 10-round unanimous decision in that one, but ready to get back to his winning ways in our co-main event of the evening with a regional belt on the line. Our tale of the tape for this 10-round featherweight matchup for the WBA Continental North America belt. The 29-year-old Leo fighting out of Las Vegas, two years younger than Nicholas Polanco, who will have the reach advantage with the official introductions of this our co-main event of the evening. Once again, we get it to Mark Lichtenfeld. Ladies and gentlemen, this bout is our co-main event of the evening, scheduled for 10 rounds for the vacant WBA featherweight contest. 
Continental North America's title. Your WBA president is Gilberto Jesus Mendoza, supervisor at ringside Julio Time. Your judges for this bout, Tito Wilgo, Joanne Richard, and Dennis Devon. Your referee in charge is Alicia Collins. Introducing to you first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing the black with gold. He weighed in at 125.4 pounds. His record, 20 wins, four losses, one draw with 11 wins by knockout from Los Mamaye, Dominican Republic. Please welcome Nicholas Lapontera Polanco. And fighting out of the red corner, wearing the red, black, and gold. He weighed in at 125.4 pounds. His record, 21 wins, just one loss with nine wins by way of knockout. From Albuquerque, New Mexico, by way of Las Vegas, Nevada, the former WBO Super Bantamweight World You guys, receive your instructions in the dressing room. Check yourself at all times. Touch them up. Scheduled for 10 rounds, 21 and 1, Leo against 24 and 1, Nicholas Polanco. First fight in two years, four Bail. months, and 14 days for Leo. Here we go. It's time to fight. Angelo Leo in the red and black with a little bit of gold trunks. Polanco in the black and gold. La Pantera back here on Pro Box TV. Polanco's coming out with a nice stiff jab. Yeah, both guys actually, right? Polanco fighting at 126 for the first time since February 6th of 2016. I mean, if it means he's going to be more aggressive, which we're seeing in round one, this might be a better weight class for him. Yeah, I was going to say, it was like coming also, not just starting out with a stiff jab, he's starting out aggressively in general. Big opportunity for Polanco. <laughs> just rips into that body with the left hook. And Leo's one of those guys, he, you know, he only has nine knockouts and his 21 wins, doesn't come across as a puncher, but when you look at him and you see him fight, he throws for real and has some real heat on those shots. The accumulation of damage. Double jab by Polanco. Also the level of opposition that Leo has been in with in recent years doesn't tend to have a lot of knockouts. He did go the distance in that low loss against Keep Stephen Fulton. Work. Nasty work with the left from all kinds of angles here in round one. Changing the trajectory that left hand, nice and Polanco. Polanco, yeah, nice left hand. Robot TV fight, guys. I, I'm telling you, they have come out ready to put on a show. Leo was sneaking in some very, very tricky body shots on both sides of the flanks of Polanco, right hand and left hook. Polanco smartly threw a body shot there as Leo was looking for uh, only threw an uppercut there as, as Leo was looking for that body shot again. Polanco also being very dangerous. He's looking for that left hook upstairs to counter the body work from Leo. Great start for Angelo Leo. Final 30 seconds of round number one. Another shot to the body of La Pantera. Oh. I'll tell you, that kind of got the Polanco's attention. Nice double jab right hand, but then Leo catching his shot. It's a bounce shot, it's a bounce shot. Little stutter step and confidence with Polanco now at the end of this great round. Well, guys, we got a firefight. What else is new? Probox TV every other Wednesday. Vegas is the 
despegue, no le des chance que gane ni un segundo ni un minuto a cada round. El Nato es muy, muy bonito, muy, muy bonito. Mira, mira que viene el creador ese día. Dos veces, el creador se la recta, recta, chiquito, uno, tambaleando. Esa es la del segundo round. ¡Va! ¿Eh? Y si puedes, cruzado, si sí puedes. Cruzado con la derecha lo tienes jodido. Great round one. All action from opening bell. These guys trading bombs throughout. Great body work from Angelo Leo. Excellent balance, but Polanco, man, dangerous guy. Looking to counter those shots over the top. Landed some good punches of his own. Neither one of these guys looks like they want to go 10 rounds tonight. Not the way they've started out. Round number two, red and black with the gold trim for the former WBO Super Bantamweight World Champion, Angelo Leo. Nicholas Polanco in the black and gold trunks, training under Jose Rodriguez at the Plant City Boxing Gym. Great start of round one by Leo and a strong finish for Polanco. Yeah, you can see Polanco, he's been on the slide in recent fights, but he definitely came in here tonight to win. When you look at Polanco's setbacks, though, Chris, one was, he called it Grand Theft of Panama, 21-0 Albert Bell, 17-2 Jaime Arboleda, and Javier Fortuna are a, a few of the people who have defeated Nicholas Polanco, and there's no shame in that. No, not at all. There's, there's no doubt as to what we're seeing here. Polanco can fight. And Leo will be better off cutting the ring off trying to cut, to cut that corner down to Polanco as Polanco's able to turn the corner trying to jab. Well, Leo closed that gap quickly with that double jab. He, he's used it a couple of times. I'm going to say it again. I think I think Angel Leo targeting the body is a very smart tactic early on. And Champy doing it in a very sneaky way too, getting inside that jab with Polanco at times, using it on the counter. And there's an exchange level to the right hand on the top. Shot to the body again. That one hurt. That one hurt. And that backs up Blanco a little bit. Yeah, Blanco's feeling that. You can see it in his legs. Leo looks for it again, and he got it. Oh, big right hand over the top, too. Still over a minute on the clock here in round number two. Leo is a sturdy guy, man. You know, he knows his, has a very good sense of position. Yeah, I was, I was commenting on his balance. He's got excellent feet. Puts himself in position, throw power. And stalking, cutting off the ring very, very at edge. Just gonna say, now he's cutting off the ring. Get off his head! Coached by his father, Miguel. Fourth time scheduled for 10 rounds for Angelo Leo. Again to the body. Love that double left hand. Polanco less active as he's more and more on the back foot, but more and more less active. Right hand lands to start things out. He came out boxing more in this round, but Angelo Leo is mugging him now. And those body shots, Jim, like you said. Oh! And now he's coming over the top with the right volley. Blanco's activity's dipped this round. Laser focus from Angelo Leo here. fue muy pésimo. Lo dejaste todo él. Que, ¿Por qué lo dejas que te tire? Cuando él te saque, lo que tiene miedo a ti. ¿Ok? Tu rapidez. That wicked left to the body of Polanco oh. right there eventually sets up the overhand right. Yeah, that was the one that buckled the knees of Polanco. He took a, a backward step after that and spent most of the fight, uh, most of the round on his back foot. And Leo's smart, switching things up. All right, makes you think he's going to the body, then comes over the top with the right hand. Great level changes and sneaky punches. Round number three, WBA Continental North America featherweight belt. 
goes to the winner of Leo in the red, black, and gold at Polanco. Fought here in January against young Oscar Alvarez. Accidental headbutt and a technical decision that went the way of Alvarez. But Polanco looked good in that fight. Yeah, he did. May have been winning on the scorecards. Nonetheless, big opportunity here, and he's got to get back on the pedal against Angelo Leo, who was in destroy mode in round number two. Yeah, Polanco came out very aggressive in round one, but in round two went into boxer mode and has been doing that since. Leo's father born in Mexico, mother born in Albuquerque. Blanco switched southpaw now. Oh, good body shot there. Blanco switched southpaw with the body shots are still getting there. Yeah, the left hand still lands. That's the thing, when you, when you put that right side in front, the liver is now in front. So that left hook is that much closer. Polanco known to switch stances frequently in his fights. This one may be to protect the body like you guys have alluded to, if it works. Has not deterred Leo, though. No, not at all. Nice head movement there. Still getting that left hook to the body in there. much less than we've seen earlier in the fight. Well, we talked about Leo earlier. A high-pressure fighter likes to mix up combinations to the head and body, and that is exactly what he has done thus far. Yeah, and you say high-pressure, but he's also not a face-first face high-pressure guy. He's, he's defensively responsible as he closes the gap, gets it to the body, and, and, and lands those punches. Yeah, I was going to say the What's same the thing. Smart pressure. When asked about this being his first fight in a couple of years, he said it was two years of hard training, sparring with champions, and he never stopped. Now Polanco returns fire. What a fight! Bone boot stuff, guys. Bone boot stuff. So you want to fight on Pro Box TV? Dig in! I know I sound like a broken record, but if you're not watching these fights on Wednesday nights, what are you doing? Yeah. Especially as a boxing fan. I mean, this is high, high level stuff. Ten seconds, gentlemen. Polanco answering late in the round. Stop. Catch and shoot there by Polanco. He needed to answer a little bit. It's an, it's an honor and a privilege to be a part of this beautiful panel, man. It's for the diehard fans, man. People that just love watching boxing. Uh, all the matches are always competitive, and they put on great shows. Round number four of our co-main event of the evening. Leo, much like round one, came out. Landed a lot, but Polanco, much like round one, finished strong. Great, great two-way action. Polanco stood his ground, landed some big shots, did some really good work. I still gave it to Leo. He's, he was more consistent throughout the round, but either way, excellent round back and forth action. Yeah, these guys can go in the phone booth. Once they start exchanging, neither guy wants to give an inch. Might be early, but I think uh, Polanco should stay at 126. Yeah. He's looking really good tonight. Really good. Polanco's last three opponents have had a combined record of 45 and 2. Tonight, he takes on the former world champion who is 21 and 1. High level competition for both men. Oh, high level of aggression in this fight thus far. Leo doubled it, counter with the right hand, and then led with it. Blanco's got some beard. He ran into two big right hands there. Oh, that body shot. Polanco with the one-two. Turns away from the body shot there. Nice left hook there from Polanco. It's funny because Polanco doesn't really back up on the head shots, but the body shots will get him back yep. up. That's what I was saying about Leo being smart going down to the body. He obviously did his homework. Polanco gives us a wink. Yeah, yeah give a wink and a he smile. Said, he said, hey, guys, I'm having fun. Don't worry. Yeah. 
real pro is Polanco. And when you have taken the number of body shots that Nicholas Polanco has taken already in this fight, and he smiles at us at the commentary table, you know he is a true boxer. Well, you know, you always got to be a little bit crazy to get in there. Yeah, yes. Well, I know you two are. Yeah, that's for sure. Big swing and a miss by Leo. Oh, just missed that. He was looking for the top of the top. Leo doesn't, it's not undeterred if he misses that counter. He takes the momentum in. There he goes again. Carries that momentum and closes the gap. That's because he's got that excellent balance. Even when he comes in, overthrows a shot, he lands with his feet in the right position. Like that. Yeah. Leo's last fight was in Houston, Texas, June of 2021 on the undercard of Jamal Charlo and Juan Montiel. Keep your punches up, Red. Charlo threw a career high 769 punches that night against Montiel. Oh, big shots in the corner thrown by Angelo Leo. Blanco trying to fight back, but those body shots are really wearing on him. Yeah, he's starting to go back up more and more. Yeah, you've seen him wilt under the pressure. 20 seconds Leo's on the clock him. here in the fourth. Leo sees it. He's, he sees Polanco trying to engage less, and he's trying to make him engage more. He's reading the body language. Leo doing a good job switching up now. Instead of the left hook to the body, he's throwing it upstairs. So that really good success in the last minute and a half with that left hand to the head. Well, you know what they said, Jim? The body shots will open up the head, and he's done that. Oh! He just missed that one. Leo has spent some time sparring with Shakir Stevenson, the former two division world champion, Olympic silver medalist. Oof, good combination there, left hook, right hand combination, pins Polanco against the ropes. Leo does a great job, and again, back, I'm, I keep mentioning the balance. When you, when you have good balance, you have your feet underneath you, it's so much easier to throw in combination that way whenever Polanco does stand still. Round number five, our co-main event is scheduled for 10 rounds. Angelo Leo, the former world champion, red, black, and gold. Black and gold for La Pantera, longtime member of the national team in his home country of the Dominican Republic, Nicholas Polanco. Mike Goldberg with my powerful partners, the former two-time world champion, the Magic Man, Paulie Malignaggi, former world champion, Chris Algieri, Wednesday night fights on your boxing channel. Snap jab from Leo. Now, Goldie, you'd mentioned the time off for Angel Leo and that he's been in the gym. You mentioned Shakur Stevenson. Uh, it's obvious. Yeah. You can see it here tonight. He looks very, very sharp, and he's gotten better. He looks like, you know, he has, he's been out of the ring, but I don't see any rust. Sometimes stepping away and letting oh. those little injuries heal, breaking it down, putting it back together isn't all that bad. No, going, going back and working on things is uh, something you got to do throughout your career. Nice start with the uppercut into the body over the top of the right. Polanco trying to work the body. And although Polanco's being at work, he's throwing just enough to stay in there. The thing is, it's not working to keep Leo off of him, and he's, he's paying a price for it. Leo is forcing him to engage more and more as Polanco looks for more and more rest. Midway point around five. In a ring this small in Pro Box TV, there is no rest. Yeah. So systematic where there's combinations. There's about six, seven to one punch disparity. Yeah, he was doing on the inside. What Polanco's doing on the inside. 
good head movement there from Leo. Even on the inside, like you said, champ, he is defensively sound, even though he's aggressive. Polanco landed a moment ago, 45 seconds remain in the fifth. Only loss for Angelo Leo was a 12-round unanimous decision loss to Stephen Fulton. Nice little spin move there. That's the old pyramid, as he's saying. The pyramid, yep. And then Fulton ran into the monster. Yeah. That pivot moved to the side and created a new angle. Leo used it perfectly. Especially when you got a guy who's starting to flinch on your shots. Yeah. You blink and the guy's not in front of you. Where'd he go? Staying invisible. They tell him Polanco, you gotta fight. <laughs> he's like, he's, he's like, you try out there and do it. He's probably thinking. I don't think he needs to be told to fight. He's doing that. <laughs> but he needs to find something that's going to stem the tie to keep Leo off him. Father Miguel in Angelo's corner. Polanco and Leo both made their professional debuts back in 2012. Still looking for that counter right hand. You know, think about Leo. He counters Polanco's jab both from the outside and the inside. He goes to the right side and from the outside of it with the right hand, or on the inside with the left hook to the head and to the body. Ooh, nice little slip there from Polanco. Polanco looks for the body. Leo has shown the full arsenal through the first half of this title fight thus far tonight on Pro Box TV. And rarely do you see the same combination twice in a row, three times in a row. Leo has mixed things up brilliantly. They're the triple jab and more. Yeah, beautiful punch variation. Good right hand there from Polanco. Still doesn't get Leo to back up. Leo's feeling it. He doesn't want to give any psychological uh, you know, gifts to uh, Polanco. He wants to keep him on that edge. And good body shots here again. That body shot and that chopping right, Paulie. And honestly, that's how you stop a guy like Polanco. You don't give him any room to breathe. Keep hitting him, keep banging him. Yeah, he's got a good chin. Yeah, he's tough. Yeah, he comes back. But you want to break him down psychologically, like you said, Chad. Polanco has never been stopped in his professional career. You can see why, he's got, a, he's got some beard on him and he's taking some hellacious body shots. And he's fighting back here, oh, another good body shot. The fight's back just hard enough to keep him in the fight. Arboleda, Fortuna, Bell, none of them were able to stop Polanco. And to Polanco's credit, it's, he's not losing his technique either. He's still doing some good moves out there, slip and sliding at times. But he is being broken down. He's got to try to catch and shoot with that on that body shot. He's got to give Leo a chance to, at least a reason to doubt that body shot. Because Leo's getting way too comfortable throwing that body shot. And there's no, really, no, no punishment really for it. So it's just going to keep on coming at him. <laughs> a rare break in the action there. <laughs> and Leo showed us something different with the lead right. You see, you see Polanco, every chance there's a break in the action. He's stretching out, taking in a deep breath. Ten seconds remain here in round number six. Polanco snapped back the head of Leo. Leo comes right back, working the body. Right 
right hand by Polanco. That's the one you were talking about, Jim, that didn't get Leo to leave him alone. Yeah, it, it pushed his head back, and then he came right back into, into punching range. Where's the point of that body? The point of that body? Come up upstairs. Body upstairs. down like that, grabbing the bucket fight. In our fighter interviews, Miguel Leo, Angelo's father, in talking about his son, said he can fight different styles. Sometimes he can put the pressure on when he needs it. The corner of Polanco, Jose Rodriguez from Plant City Boxing. What a co-main event. Scheduled for 10 rounds for the WBA Continental North America Featherweight Belt. Round number seven. Red and black with gold for Leo. Black and gold for Polanco. The pace has been incredible. And Leo again using that double jab to close that gap. Polanco's walking himself into corners now, though. That's not a good sign. First fight at featherweight since 2016 for Nicholas Polanco. Second fight here on Pro Box TV. Left hook there from Polanco. Partially caught on the glove by Leo, but got some flack off that. I mentioned that Polanco has never been stopped. The one loss Leo has on his record against Stephen Fulton also went the distance. And that was a war. Yes. They were going back and forth. They, talk about fighting a phone booth. Yeah, and you can see Leo. Leo doesn't mind it one bit. Nope. Two years off, he went right back where he left off. And that was the fight, actually, you know, with Stephen Fulton when you realized that he could fight in the inside that well with a guy like Leo who's very good at it. Polanco trying to stay busy, match the output of Leo here. Midway point of round seven. You know, I, did, I sensed a little reprieve in the action last round from Leo, and it, it kind of started out in this round as well. Left snaps the oh. head of Polanco back. Overhand right catches Polanco right on the chin. I'll tell you, the beard of, of Polanco. I know Leo's not a big puncher. He's got nine knockouts and 21 wins, but still, these are shots that land him clean. Big right hands. And champ, it's while they're trading, too. Those shots always hurt more. Yeah. Polanco doesn't even blink. Polanco's technique a bit better now here on the inside. He's not How good apart. is this? My goodness. Justifiably so. What a battle. Ten seconds, gentlemen. Stop. Champ. What a round, man. These guys going toe to toe. I love it when fighters come to Pro Box TV and they get the memo. The memo. Like, All right, this is what it's going to be. Yeah. Like if, if one doesn't get the memo, the other guy reminds him. <laughs> yeah. And it doesn't last very long for the other guy. 
round number eight in a spectacular featherweight matchup, our co-main event of the evening. Double jab from Leo. Let's see if Polanco can score big in the late rounds here. And even though Polanco's coming off a string of losses, if anyone had a question about why he keeps getting phone calls, this 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 is your answer. Yep. Good point, champ. He's comes here fighting and we don't we don't punish you for getting beat here. If you put up the fights and you're entertaining, you'll get a call from Pro Box TV. And 126, as we mentioned, seems just fine at 31 years old for Nicholas Polanco. Like I said, I think he seems better. Yeah. He seems better here at 20. So energy levels are better. Yeah, I mean, his chin gotta, is definitely better. Yeah, you got to understand, Leo's an ex-world champion. It's not like he's fighting a slouch here, you know. Uh, uh, even a slightly lesser opponent, Polanco, may, may really be able to do something here because Polanco himself has shown himself capable of, of at least being in this fight. He's certainly behind, but he's capable of being in this fight. Now, it's, it's a one-sided competitive fight, if that makes sense. Yeah, oh, it does. Oh. Here we go again. And this is sort of where Leo sort of separates himself here because his punches tend to be a little shorter with this trading. But both guys willing to give and trade with each other. I mentioned the high level of competition that Polanco has faced in his last number of fights, including tonight. Now his last four opponents, and this includes Leo at 21 and 1, a combined record of 66 and 3. And he's still going here in the eighth. Oh, right hand lands nicely. And Polanco comes right back with a right hand of his own. Doesn't land, but that shows you the, the, heart, uh, the heart and mindset of a fighter. Strong amateur pedigree for both men. About 400 amateur fights for Polanco. Longtime member of the Dominican Republic national team. You know a fight's good when Paul Imam actually puts a bib on. We got, we got sweat and blood flying. Yeah, you gotta protect the outfit, guys. Okay, you, got that, you got that nice sharp tie you gotta protect. <laughs> Man, the way that he digs to the body with the left and chops with that right is beautiful. The right hand has been the story of this round for Leo, man. He has landed some vicious chopping right hands over the top. And that's why his attack is so difficult to time, too. He goes from attacks at both sides, different angles. the story of that last round. There we see a nice, beautiful, straight right hand from Leo. And, and to your point, champ, he mixes up his attack so well. Yep. It's very difficult to defend against a guy who throws both sides equally as good. And on that replay, you see how he created the space with the jab. Uh, Polanco makes the mistake you're not supposed to make, which is going straight back. You go straight back, you wind up on the end of the right hand, especially with Polanco actually dipping towards that right hand as well. Yeah, I saw some interesting body language from Polanco in the corner last round. It, it seems like that left hand might be compromised in some way. And you see him coming out with that left hand down at the, at the, at the hip. Yeah, and he's throwing right hands only. Yep. yep. Interesting. If, if this is the way it's going to be, we'll see if he's able to finish the distance here. Good yeah. catch there, Chris. I couldn't tell if it was the hand or the shoulder, but he walked back to the, the, the corner with that left hand looking very awkwardly pinned to his side. Nice shower we just took there. Nice. Nice. <laughs> Round number nine. Yeah, and you notice when he went down, he didn't brace with the left hand. Yeah. He just went to the knee. And he, he kind of motioned and stretched out that left arm earlier. I thought maybe he was trying to set something fancy up, but he may have pulled something earlier in the fight because it is very obvious now that that left arm is compromised. 
It would be smart of Leo here to start attacking that shoulder. Start jabbing it, punching the elbow, hit whatever you can. Get off his head, get off his head. Yeah, whenever I had a guy who would do that, hand down. Is that right? Hand again, champ. I would be cracking that elbow, that shoulder. Ooh, that right Alonso hand hurt. is one tough dude. Double, tripling up his right hand. Hand fighting on the inside, too, to get position. Basically fighting one-handed right now. And it's hard to fight one-handed when, oh. when it's your lead hand that's hurt, too. Yep, and especially when you got a guy putting so much pressure on you like Leo is. And it's not that he can't throw, he can't defend on that side either. Great point, great point. We're talking about that right hand last round. If you can't keep that left hand up, you only have one way to defend, that's get out of the way. Uh-oh. Gonna check it right now. Yep. Is it a glove issue or is it injured? Because why would they be checking? Usually asking him where it hurts. Okay. I mean, that seems like it might be the shoulder. Could be a torn bicep tendon. This fight is over. No, no, he said that. I'm saying no. Polanco. Yeah. Wait, no, no, no. No. Polanco saying no. The ref Listen, saying yes. If you, you should be able to fight with an injured arm. Yeah. But you also can't tell somebody it's hurt and then want to keep fighting. That's the only thing. Because an arm, an arm injury or a hand injury is something you don't have to admit unless you want to. And that's I'm not saying he should continue or not. That's up to him. Right. What I'm saying is if he truly wanted to continue, he wouldn't mention the injury. This is coming from someone who's had a lot of hand injuries yeah. mixed up. Yeah. Yeah, you and me both, partner. You and me both. The doctor just told me it's up in the shoulder area, and its shoulder was, it's not the bicep tendon, but the shoulder was popping in and out, uh, and that's why he couldn't use it. Might be a dislocated shoulder then. That's what he talked about, yep. yep. No. And you see, you know, he, he's fighting with that hand down. He was only using the right hand that entire round. Like I said, and that's where I noticed, he yes. did not put yes. the arm out. If it was your hand, you still would have been able to put out the shoulder though, a little different. You don't want to brace when you're going down. He went down to his knees rather than post with that left hand, that injured arm. Incredible performance by Angelo Leo. And take nothing away from his opposition tonight, Nicholas Polanco, who was willing to fight two more rounds with one hand, basically. Yeah, he's, he's, he's mo motioning to the shoulder. to make it official. Let's get it to Mark Lichtenfeld. Ladies and gentlemen, the ringside physician stops this contest at one minute, 59 seconds of the ninth round due to injury. Your winner by technical knockout. And now the WBA Continental North America's featherweight champion, Angelo. I've been in the ring sparring the likes of Nonito Donaire, Marlon Tapales, uh, Shakur Stevenson. So I've been active. I've been active. Why the two-year layoff? I just had some issues, you know. I just had some personal issues, but I'm back, and uh, we're ready to get that second world title. Yeah, there's no ring rust, clearly. Uh, you, 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 you basically brought the pressure from round one. Was, was it the body shots that you felt worked best for you? Was that the plane going in because of the long torso? Yeah, exactly. Uh, uh, you know, everyone knows me as a, as a body puncher. And that's exactly what I did tonight. I, I hit the body. I, I know how to hit it, even though they may be expecting it. I just know how to get them in. 
with, with he a bit more resistant than you expected? We were noticing a lot of those body shots getting in there, and he was still, uh, you know, trying to respond with fire. Yeah. Definitely, uh, Polanco, he's a tough, credible fighter. He's fought uh, lightweights, he's fought a Robin, Robin Francisel, um, Albert Bell, Javier Fortuna. So, you know, he's been there with bigger fighters than me. And, uh, you know, I, had, I knew I had to work the body to slow him down. When are we seeing you next, bro? Because you cannot have these kind of layoffs. When you fight like this, these are fan-friendly fights. You got to get back in the ring soon. When can we see you next? Hopefully at the beginning of the year, I'll be back giving you guys exciting fights. No more layoffs, bro. No more layoffs. Back to you guys. Pauly, thank you very much, and very graceful, very humble in victory. Big smile on the face of Angelo Leo. And yeah, Chris, you certainly would not say, yeah, man, he took a couple years off and had ring rust. <laughs> not tonight. No, he said he's been working. He said he's been in the ring. He hasn't been in the ring fighting, but he's been in the ring working. He's been in the gym, and that was obvious from round number one. We said, just like the champ Paul Malinaji said, where's the ring rust? I didn't see any. He looked better. No. He looked more complete. The word that comes to mind when I, when I look at this performance, comprehensive. He did it all. Offense, defense, right hands, left hooks, body shots, head shots. He set things up beautifully. Cutting off the ring, cutting off angles, putting tons of pressure. He had a man in front of him who was on a mission to, to, to see the final bell. He still got him out of there. Incredible performance from, from Leo. There we see Polanco land a nice right hand. Did not deter Angelo Leo. He came forward, ripping the body shots, climbing the body. I mean, he did it all tonight. And just like the champ Malinaji said, when are you back in the ring? We got to see this guy active because this is some beautiful, beautiful work here. And man, Pro Box TV always delivers. These guys got the memo. They knew what they had to do. They received a nice exchange along the ropes. Round number nine, unfortunately, an injury to the shoulder of Polanco, which seemed to happen at the end of round number eight. He came out trying to fight valiantly with one hand, but the judges, I'm sorry, the ref, uh, the doctors said that they had seen enough. He didn't want the fight stopped. You see him there arguing, but the doctors came to the decision that he should not continue. TKO9 for Angela Leo. Well, I'll tell you what. I don't know what those guys in the back right now getting set for our main event are thinking, but they're going to have a tough time topping what we just saw in our co-main event of the evening. And for Angelo Leo, Paulie, he talked about the time away, personal issues, but when you're working with Stevenson and Nito and, and, I mean, and great fighters like that, you are going to improve, and he certainly did. Absolutely, and, and you can tell it wasn't just words. You know, a lot of times, guys will stay away from the ring, right. and they'll say they were in the gym the whole time, but you can see the ring rust. But with Angelo Leo, you can see that it's not just words. This guy has to have been in the gym with top fighters, because in reality, the way he showed, the skills he showed, he showed up and he showed out. I mean, he was finding the angles, cutting the angles well, punch selection, fighting, landing right hand, landing body shots. Very, very impressive performance tonight. And the kind of performance that will really create demand for seeing him again. That's why I had to ask him, you know, when am I seeing you again? Because we can't wait two years for you to have these kind of performances again. He, this is a guy that needs to stay busy. Yeah, he certainly looks like the world champion that he was previously before he lost the belt to Stephen Fulton. Chris, we've had a year with so many great fights and so many great fighters. But I can't think of one that matched Angelo Leo in the way that he changed things up. Came from different angles, different arcs, just so creative with his attack. Well, I said at the top of the show, the level of fighter that he is, we haven't really seen these kinds of guys. He's a former right. world champion with yep. one loss, and it's to Stephen Fulton. Yeah. I mean, this is a very high-level, world-class guy, and we got him here on Pro Box TV. That's the kind of fights that we're putting on. We're elevating our game. These guys are coming, they're bringing, they know what you have to bring here, and, I mean, they're, they're living up to it. I say it all the time. We got more than one man event every night. Yes, we that do. could have been a main event right there on any show in, in the world with, with two excellent fighters who gave it their all. Absolutely great stuff. And incredible toughness and durability for Polanco. And, and we still have a main event. And we <laughs> still have a main event. And he wanted to continue with one hand. Big props to Nicholas Polanco for a tough, tough performance against Angelo Leo. Our main event of the evening is coming up next. Earlier, Chris visited with Boca Chica. Now it's time to visit with Alberto Palmetta. We're here with Alberto Palmetta. Uh, Alberto, thank you for being here with us in Pro Box. How you feel minutes before your fight against uh, Janilson Boca Chica? 
I'm really excited for this fight. I'm thankful for, for this opportunity for Pro Box TV, you know, for, I, I'm really excited. I'm ready for the fight, you know. A lot of people don't know, but you were in the Olympic team for Argentina yes. in Rio 2016. Tell us about that experience. I've been in the Olympic team for eight years. So, and I competed in the Panama Games, American Games, World Cup. I was number, uh, I was in the top 10 ranking for a long time. And then I went to Olympic. And after that, I made a decision to turn to professional. You were telling me during the fighting interviews, a very curious, uh, thing about how you met Mike Tyson. Tell us exactly how you met Mike Tyson. That was amazing. But the first thing that was amazing for me is met my idol, that is Roy Jones. I went to his house and that was amazing. The second thing that is amazing for me is meet Mike Tyson. You know, I met Mike Tyson in my gym in Palm Beach Boxing and it was like a, unexpected for me. I went to the gym like a normal day and my coach told me, hey, let's go outside, I have something for you. And then I saw that one truck was coming and a big guy was getting outside of the truck and was Mike Tyson. And, and I changed some work with him and that was amazing. And when you met Roy Jones Jr., did he give you any advice as a boxer? Yeah, he, he's really smart. I like the vision that he has about boxing. He said that, Football is everything, and the sparring has to be a chess match. Don't have to be like a fight, you know. You have to be smart in sparring and practice different things. You know? Alberto, what can we expect of, of this fight for you against Janelson Boca Chica? We're going to expect a, a really uh, enjoyable fight, you know, for the audience because he's, you know, a guy that he likes to chain punches in close distance. I'm that kind of guy. I like to fight inside, I like to put pressure. And people there are going to have fun, you know. Thank you, Alberto. Thank you very much, my friend. Okay? Thank you. Best of luck. So we are set for our main event of the evening. And Alberto first got to spend some time in Pensacola with Superman. And our friend Roy Jones Jr. left a huge impression he would on any boxer on young Alberto Paul Chris. Yeah, and like I said uh, at our open, I mean, he's been tearing through South Florida gym sparring everywhere. He can mention uh, Roy Jones Jr. and Mike Tyson, who's now been spotted along South Florida gyms <laughs> from time to time. But uh, yeah, no, Palmetto is, is a guy who's very well known down here in South Florida. This is a big opportunity for him, a huge stage, and a win here really propels him uh, into, into the top level guys where he can get some big fights. Really, what I thought he was going to talk about was meeting Chris Algieri, Paul. <laughs> well, you know what? He met all of us, but I'll tell you what. <laughs> guys like, meeting guys like Roy and Mike Tyson is special, especially yeah. for fighters, younger fighters, you know, that grew up idolizing guys like that. It's really uh, a special moment. Even when you're a pro yourself, you, you still have that, that starstruck mentality when you meet guys like that. I'm and, still starstruck when I see Roy. Yeah, well, well, sure. I am too. I am too. I, I texted him when I saw him in Saudi Arabia. I'm like, <laughs> hey, there's Superman hanging out, doing his thing. Here's the here's what I love though about that interview with Ricardo and Alberto. His eyes lit up when he was asked about Tyson again. It's like a little kid yeah. in his experience with Iron Mike. The, in, the interview just went right to the description yeah. of how we met Tyson right. and, and when he, Tyson was in the parking lot and how he felt. It, you could see it was natural. It was it was it was genuine. It was genuine. That's the word. Thanks to the word. Thank champ. That's see that's my uh, vocabulary genius here. <laughs> I get the thesaurus. Yeah. Mine too, but, by the way. <laughs> but but you know it, it, you could see you could feel it when you you could feel the interview. It wasn't just listening to it. You could feel right. that interview. So we will have a main event that may just be as good as our co-main event. May, well, maybe it will because it is Pro Box TV, Chris. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we get, we get double main events here, so why not? Yep, 18 and 2, Alberto Palmetta and Janelson Boca Chica, 17, 1 and 1. They are scheduled for 10 rounds for the WBA Continental America's welterweight belt. So who will walk away with a belt? We already know that Angelo Leo has one. We also know that pretty much every belt that's out there in her weight class belongs to Amanda Serrano. She has been outstanding. She continues to make history.
this was not the first time women fight 12 three minute rounds. It's been done by Chrissy Martin. It had also been done by Le uh, in the 90s and it had been done by Layla McCarter in 2007, but it never stuck. And why did it never stick? Because women's boxing really didn't have the eyes on it yet that it does now. Yeah, I, I think Amanda Serrano is very special. So it makes sense that she would be a, a person to, 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 to the first person that has so many eyes during this current women's boxing era to go 12 threes and have a, a championship fight and not just a woman's championship fight. Again, believe that when you know what you're watching, you're watching two women right there who are uh, at the top of this sport and one who has been at the top for so long that she's willing to, to like Paulie used that word earlier, set the president. You know what I mean? I think that she has now set the bar for women's boxing and has taken it an to another level. If I had it my way, I think 12 three minute rounds should be for the like the special fights, you know, uh, for the women. You know, let's let's ease into it as far as let's make it championship fights where, you know, the big name fighters are fighting like, uh, you know, Clarissa Shields, uh, Amanda Serrano. You know, you, I, I think it needs to sort of gradually grow into it. Also, you got to understand this and this might not be a popular opinion, but there's probably more belts than there are women. So every freaking women's fight could be a title fight. Does that mean they all have to fight 12 three-minute rounds? You know, I don't think that's fair either, you know? Well, it's very true what you just said, Paulie. The quote, or Amanda Serrano, somebody's gonna, like, set this pace and precedent for three-minute rounds. Those are two of the top ones to do it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mentioned Sinisa Estrada in there as well. They just cut me off, but I think those are, pretty much my top w female fighters in the world right now. And then I think those kind of fighters can fight 12 threes easily. There's probably a few more in there. But at the same time, I don't feel like every kind of title fight in the women's should just go right directly to 12 three-minute rounds. I do think that it should make more progression as opposed to the last times we saw it where it was a one and done both times. This time, I think there needs to be a little bit of momentum set there. And I think doing it that way creates a little bit of momentum, little by little. So like that, that, that precedent can, keep, can be set and it can keep growing that way. And Chris, the, the strategy, the pacing, so many things change with that extra 60 seconds. I mean, the biggest thing that changes is your preparation, your yeah. training. A lot of women already train three minute rounds when they're in gyms, but when you have to do and you have to prepare for a fight that way, what happens in the ring is very different than what happens in the gym, but the preparation happens in the gym and on the road. So these women are going to have to step up their training, get ready for the, that distance, because, man, it, 12 rounds is a long time. 12 it, threes is a long time. It certainly is, and you don't have to be in a hurry if it's not a two-minute round it's a three-minute round oh yeah so we will see but great to see the trend starting and as women's boxing continues to grow exponentially set for our main event in the evening our tail of the tape for this 10-round welterweight matchup detroit michigan's janelson figueroa boca chica 25 years old his opponent from Argentina, eight years his elder. Boca Chica has the height and the reach advantage. With the official introductions, once again, Mark Lichtenfeld. Ladies and gentlemen, this is your Pro Box TV main event of the evening. We're scheduled for 10 rounds for the vacant WBA welterweight Continental America's title. WBA President Gilberto Jesus Mendoza, Supervisor Ringside Julio Time. Your judges for this bout, Dennis Devon, Tito Wilgo, and Joanne Richard. And your referee in charge is Christopher Young. Introducing to you first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing the white, pink, and blue. He weighed in at 146.4 pounds. His record, 18 wins, two losses, with three wins by knockout. From West Palm Beach, Florida, the 2016 Argentinian Olympian. opponent fighting out of the red corner, wearing the red, white, and blue. He weighed in at 145.8 pounds. His record, 17 wins, one loss with one draw, with 11 wins by knockout from the great fighting city of Detroit, Michigan. Here's Janelson Figueroa Bacchica. Listen, this is 
from the Spanish Highs. Everything up here, I'm gonna consider legal, and then I'm gonna consider legal. Do you know what time it is? Fight hard, fight clean, touch them up. Set for our main event of the evening. Boca Chica and Paul Meta. Here we go. It's time to fight. Red, white, and blue trunks for Janelle and Boca Chica. White, pink, and blue trunks for Alberto Palmetta. 18 and 2 against 17, 1 and 1 for the vacant WBA Continental America's belt. The Southpaw Palmetta, more experienced at the higher level of opponents, but Boca Chica wants to see his first time here on Pro Box be a time in which he leaves with the belt. You can see Boca Chica trying to measure and trying to create that middle range where he can wants to work there, and Palmetto wants to get inside that middle range and fight at close range. The battle of real estate begins. Yeah, right away you can see the mindset of both guys. <laughs> Left hand, right hand combination from Palmetto there. Palmetto wants to get on the inside. He wants to bang with both hands just like that. Boca Chica more of the sharpshooter. Fighting from the outside, trying to set those shots up, pawing with that lead hand. Ooh, good right hand over the top from Palmetto as well. Palmetto coming off a fight with Jabal James in which the decision went to James. Looking to get back to his winning ways here tonight against Boca Chica. South ball against Orthodox here in our main event of the evening. The check hook from Palmetto is a nicely timed punch. He's been catching Boca Chica with that one a couple times already here early in round one. And Boca Chica moving the opposite way you, you ideally want to move against the South ball. But so far, Palmetto has been landing more on the right hook than the, than the left hand. I think he landed the left hand early in the round, but that's it. That's one of the things I noticed when watching uh, tape on Palmetto. I mean, he, he punches well with both hands. He's not a one-handed fighter like a lot of southpaws are. Good size welterweights here. Both guys filled in nicely today after the round yesterday. Ooh, the right hand there seemed to shook Palmetto. Double left thrown by Boca Chica. Nice hook there to the head from Boca Chica as well. He's starting to open up later in this round. And yeah, these guys not having trouble finding each other. Nope. No, no. Well, Palmetto is trying to station himself right in front of Boca Chica. Ten seconds. Ten seconds. The 2016 Olympian from Argentina. And watch those heads with that softball right hand there. start in our main event of the evening. Good straight left hand over the top there from Palmetta. There we see another left hand. Yeah, a little uppercut there. Yeah, that, was a nice, that was a tricky little shot. The southpaw Palmetta, the white, pink, and blue trunks, red, white, and blue trunks for Figueroa Boca Chica. Janelson. His father, Nelson, is his trainer. His mother's name, Janice. His name is a combination of mom and dad. Yeah, good body shots there from Boca Chica. And that's how things that have to depend on a good right hand there as Palmetto kind of pulled away, and that's what you don't want to do. 
go straight back like that against the long right hands of Boca Chica. You know, based on the record, both guys are good punchers, good knockout percentage, and I think Boca Chica is finding that needs to actually hit Palmetto with some power, not just box on the outside. You know, a lot of those Grand guys, or Detroit guys anyway, you know, they have that long frame with, with the long right hand, and that's what I think Boca Chica would like to set up more consistently against Palmetto, but Palmetto obviously trying to close that gap. Boca Chica got his start at the world-famous Kronk Gym. He said he did do some sparring there in preparation for tonight's fight, but he trains under his father Nelson at the downtown boxing gym in the Motor City of Detroit, Michigan. And catch and shoot there by Palmetto. Okachika, the taller, longer fighter. Palmetto trying to use his craftiness to get inside and score points. Yeah, this, the size of this ring is going to benefit Palmetto and yeah. his style, but Boca Chica doing a good job fighting from the outside, keeping it long. Yeah, I feel like this ring, this ground, he's having a better, a better time of keeping that range more consistently. Palmetto just doubled up that left a moment ago, scored twice. I like the eyes of Boca Chica. He's very aware of what's going on, trying to set things up, looking around. Trying to figure his man out. Good body shot there from Palmetto. Yeah, I think Palmetto will want to stay on that with those body shots. Long torso of Boca Chica. Body shots would be something to target. And Paulie, in the post-fight interview, after our coming event, you made that point about Polanco having that long frame and Leo going to the body of that long frame. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's, it, it's inviting, especially if you're the kind of guy who wants to get inside. When you get inside, you want to use those body shots. But I'll tell you, Boca Chica's gone to the body pretty well this fight as well. Well, he is Puerto Rican. <laughs> yes, very true. I mean, if you just look at the body types of both of these guys, you get a sense of what their styles are going to be. I think those body shots are actually really bothering Paul right now. Boca Chica reaches for a hook to the head there and gets caught with a with the southpaw left hand of Palmetto. Told you to double the jab, drop the left hand, and keep punching. Because he's not throwing a lot of punches. So you go ahead. What's up, y'all? Y'all know who it is. Showtime Sean Porter, two-time retired world champion. I just joined Pro Box TV. Check everything out. Follow, subscribe, click the link below. You want to be Pro Box TV. Mike Goldberg, the Magic Man, Paulie Molinaji, Chris Algieri, Wednesday night fights on your boxing channel, Pro Box TV, round three of our main event of the evening for the WBA Continental America's welterweight belt. 18 and 2, Alberto Palmetta, the Southpaw, Janelson Figueroa, Boca Chica in the red, white, and blue trunks. Corner of Palmetto when we were at break, Charles Mooney from the Palm Beach Boxing Club said that last round was close. You gotta continue to push forward like that. Palmetto trying to up that pressure this time. Again, Boca Chica continues to move towards the left hand of, of uh, Palmetto. Big answer by Boca Chica. A lot of those punches he smothered, but one or, one or two he landed. Yeah, I mean, Boca Chica's got power too. You can see it in his hands. He's got, he's got, he's got some heavy shots. 11 knockouts amongst his 17 wins for Boca Chica. 13 knockouts for Palmetto. Midway point around number three. 
Palmetta. Part of our showcase main event tonight. We are here 24-7, 365 for news, talk shows, and of course, twice a month on a Wednesday, our live fights on your boxing channel. Subscribe today. Boxing never sleeps, and neither do we. You got that right. Boca Chica needs to use oh, yeah. some of those, the shot again by Palmetto. Boca Chica has gone away from the, some of those take charge punches. You know, you, you establish range with some take charge punches. Yes, there's touching and measuring when you're taller, but you also have to throw some some punches to take charge of the range. And I think Boca Chica has gone away from that. Sometimes he does have a tendency to wait and feel like uh, Palmetto is getting a little bit more comfortable getting closer. And champ, you mentioned that he's always moving to his right side, which is to the left hand of Palmetta. And he, Palmetta just missed a nice overhand left hand. Palmetta with that lead right to the body. Now the combination. Boca Chica needs to be careful throwing that right uppercut from too far away. Not a lot is landing clean for either guy. You know, even when the shots do land, it's partially blocked. So far, you know, looking for somebody to take charge of the fight. It seems like Palmetta's offering the pressure. Yeah, that was a better round for Palmetta. Come on, big one. I want you to double, continue doubling the jab. You, you can see everything he throws at you. You catch it. But I want you to be told. Go ahead and get in the fight, man. Don't hesitate. Believe in what you know. Don't let it go. Go into your book, man. You got a whole bag. Let it come here. No, but no, man. Come on. Come on. Papa San, relax. event continues the 2016 olympian from argentina alberto palmetta the southpaw janelson boca chica in the red white and blue 17 one and one against 18 and two Something I've seen from Palmetta, from seeing him in the gym and seeing him in, on tape. When he gets comfortable, he'll drop his hands and do some upper body rhythm and movement. That usually feels, shows that he's feeling, he's feeling his flow. He's got a right hook from Palmetta again. Use it to get inside. Again, Boca Chica, for me, not throwing enough take charge punches. There's a couple there. Yeah, he's got to be consistent with that kind of attack. Get Palmetta to kind of respect the range that, that he needs. He's also got to aim a little lower. I think he's aiming too high, like the forehead of Palmetto. You got a guy who's short and also fighting short. You can't aim for the head, you got to aim lower. That was a good right got him there. Him. My coach used to always tell me, throw at the collarbone, you'll get the chin. Oh! That was a perfect collarbone punch. Because <laughs> it hit the chin of Boca Chica. Palmetta, very systematic. Yeah, he's not doing anything special either. Just keeping it fundamental. Yep. Be brilliant at the basics. You see, from this range, Boca Chica has to create more. You know, it's like every once in a while he'll land an individual shot partially. When he's got to create more. When he's got the range he wants, he needs to be the one to create more and initiate that offense more. He, it seems like he's only really working when the range gets close enough for him to. But he's got to create and he's got to keep Palmetta on the defensive. Because this, by this approach, you're not going to keep Palmetta on the defensive. Final minute of round number four. Palmetta, a high-profile athlete back home in Argentina. Nice right hand there from Boca Chica. Not what you want to do after you land it, though, going straight back like that. I 
I like the angles that Palmetto cuts on the inside. He, he doesn't just freeze when he gets tied up. He steps into a good position. These are ticky-tack moments, man. These, these rounds are not going to be easy to score. No. Both guys are having success. Good body shots there from Boca Chica. He got away from that a little bit. That was He was having good success with that in round two. Good flurry to finish the round. Talks about his travels to Pensacola to meet his childhood hero, Superman Roy Jones Jr. He said, my body was shaking. You know, obviously the, the, the height disparity is very obvious. Balpana fights small, though. He's shorter, but also gets nice and low underneath the shots. So they're saying Boca Chica needs to aim a little bit lower on his punches. There we see Palmetto coming out of that crowd firing. And also the important thing, too, is to fire back and get the last view of the judges. And Palmetto seems to do that. Boca Chica sometimes lands a shot, and Palmetto will return fire right away and sort of get the last answer. On, and the judges will notice that. Again, especially in these ticky tack kind of rounds, you've got to make sure you get the last look on the judge's eyes, and you sort of create that distance and spacing between the next exchange. That's an excellent, excellent point. Paul Meta talked about Superman being a showman, developing all those feints that made his boxing so attractive. But everything he did in the ring was for a reason. And right now, Boca Chica is trying to score some points. But even scoring points, he's doing well here, but he smothers himself. Yes. He smothers. They, you got to understand your range here. You know, and especially that Palmetto gets so low like that when you get close. You got to understand what range you got to fire from. Because there's moments Boca Chica is doing well right now, but he could be doing better if he can maximize the, the intensity of which he's landing by not sm being smothered. There's a good shot there by Palmetto. Oh. Roy said to Alberto, when your opponent is making some kind of feint or gesture for no reason, that's when you know you got him. Round six, this one's scheduled for 10. Good shot to the body. Pace picking up here in the sixth. I was just gonna say, Goldie, it's heating up a little bit. Yep. I can't believe we're already in round six. Another great night of fights here on Pro Box TV. Yeah, both men landing well. But no one's really taken charge yet. Yeah, both men also staying defensively pretty responsible, but yeah, nobody, nobody's taking charge, champ, and nobody's really oh, a good uppercut there by Palmetto. Small moments of eye-catching shots. That's why the Browns are going to be tough to score. Both men fighting for the first time here on Pro Box TV center ring trading. Boca Chica's working a lot harder. Oh, just got his head snapped back. 30 seconds. If the, half, if the second half of this fight is like the first half of this fight, both of these guys are going to come out of this fight thinking they won it. Yeah, good point. Somebody has to pull away in the second half. That's why we fight 10 rounds. Yeah. Separate the men from the boys after, after round five. Little switch to Southpaw late in this round for Boca Chica.
meter la presión. ¡Ey! ¡Ya! ¡Ya! Respira duro. Vamos. Hay que meter la presión y cerrado. Hay que presión y cerrado. Se va a quedar. Presión y cerrado. Vamos a meter la presión y cerrado. Vamos a meter la presión y cerrado. Vamos a meter la presión y The corner of Alberto Palmetta. Start of round number seven. Main event scheduled for 10. The Southpaw in the white, pink, and blue trunks. Boca Chica in the red, white, and blue trunks. Boca Chica went the distance in his lone loss. Palmetto was stopped once, but that was back in 2017, his first career loss. Double jab out of range from Boca Chica. Body shots there. This is anybody's fight. Looking to rip that right hook again. I tell you, the whole fight, Boca Chica has been going the, the opposite way you would figure against the southpaw. I'm not saying it's, it's the worst idea. I mean, he's had decent success with counter jab there from Palmetto. But also switching directions is also one way to sort of vary your offense. He's not switched directions at all. There he goes a little bit there. He tries there now. High praise from Dimitri Salida. Oh, well, when he gets his foot on the outside, he waves the right hand, though, which is technically what you're supposed to do, right? Saying Boca Chica, one of the best American prospects. <laughs> Representing the Motor City. <laughs> Boca Chica sometimes makes it. Had a graphic, graphic error, we apologize. Round six, 50 seconds on the clock. So a lot of fight left. Well, to my point, I couldn't believe it was round six, because it wasn't. Because it wasn't, <laughs> exactly, Chris. I was thinking the same thing. It's round six now? Yes, round six now. Yeah. More action. Time flies and you're having fun. Paul Meta staying busy here late in this round. And to your point, champ, we're going to need that extra round to figure out who's winning this yeah. fight because it's very tight. You see from here, though, since being in the outside fighter, Boca Chica could use things like feints, changing looks, changing levels. He doesn't do a lot of that. Yes, Boca Chica sometimes has the advantage in the exchange and sometimes he doesn't. But you want to make it as confusing as possible for Palmetto to see different things, different heights, use feints, use different angles. It's not and not as creative as you'd like to see from Boca Chica with the potential that you can you figure that a guy with that kind of uh, height and, and, and width and, um, and length has. Somebody to take charge of the fight, guys. Charles Mooney talking about Alberto Palmetta said he is a complete boxer. He is a coach's dream because he's anxious to work, eager to try. Those are the qualities that, as an athlete, you have to have in order to be successful. Mooney said because he is built like that mentally and physically, he considers him an outstanding athlete in and out of the ring. Round number seven, Palmetta and Boca Chica. With my powerful partners, the former two-time world champion, the Magic Man, Paulie Molinaggi, former world champion, Chris Algieri, Mike Goldberg on a Wednesday night. Spectacular fights once again on your boxing channel. And 
this is where conditioning really starts to play a yes. part in a 10 round fight. We're going to see who can pull away and establish themselves. Red counter, body shot there. Boca Chica, he tries to follow up. Little dirty stuff there, holding and hitting from Boca Chica. Christopher Young all over it. Katika doing a better job of attacking Palmetto before he crosses that critical distance line and gets into his own punching range. But yeah, you see Palmetto looking to be first himself now. Palmetto always tries to get it right back. And that's why Boca Chica has to stay consistent in being first. That comes from a lot when you have a big amateur background, if you, especially international level, always answering. But you know what? Being first to me isn't always having to throw punches. You can be first and still conserve energy again by changing looks, fainting first, changing looks first, you know, stepping over first. You know, just command the ring first in general. And then, of course, there is, you also have to punch first at times. But I, Boca Chica doesn't do all of those things. And considering the height he has and, and the figure that he has, he could have a lot more to his arsenal. Body shot there from Boca Chica. And of course, return combination from Palmetto. First fight since September of last year for Janelson Boca Chica. Another guy coming off a layoff here. And Champ, you made a great point about the direction in, of Boca Chica in terms of where he's moving all night. Every time he moves to his left, steps outside that lead foot, he lands. Yeah. When he moves to his, his right, it's a shootout. It's a one-for-one. -one. There it is. When he's moving to his left, he's in control. It nullifies the angle. For yes, there it is again. Palmetto. Palmetto can't fight her back. You know, you see, when he moves to the left, you're right, champ. There it is. Palmetto's able to open up for his left hand. That check hook of Palmetto has landed on frequent occasion tonight. And I'm not one that advocates you gotta always move in the same direction against a southpaw. I know a lot of people say that. I think you can move in both directions, but you gotta know how to do it. I actually used to like baiting guys by moving to my right so I could get him with a check left hook. Yeah, there's ways of doing both directions, but you gotta, again, you gotta know how to do it. Oh, nice combination laid by Palmetta. Great finish to the round for Victor. I mean, you wanna steal those moments right at the end of the round. Fighting out of West Palm Beach, Florida, by way of Argentina. Strong finish of the round for Palmetta. Strong finish of a round where Boca Chica was having an excellent round, and Palmetta came back to potentially steal that from the judges. And to your point, Chan, this is going to be a difficult fight to score because of situations like that. Exactly. Round eight, our main event scheduled for 10. Men looking to return to their winning ways. With the WBA Continental America's belt on the line. Double jab from Paul Meta. Answered by Boca Chica. I mean, you can see Boca Chica, he has all the tools in the toolbox. He just doesn't always put them together properly. And Chris, you mentioned earlier how Palmetta, shorter, he gives away reach to Boca Chica, but he's also fighting very compact. Yes, very compact. He's a shorter guy who fights short, and those guys can be very difficult to hit land clean punches on. And we've seen that numerous times for Boca Chica, trying to find his opponent. 
nicely done with the uppercut up the middle. Those shorter guys can be tricky because they get so low, your gloves start following their head, and then they've got shots over the top. And he needs to do more of that. Those eye catching shots. Every other Wednesday, two weeks from tonight, Justin Poldo's back to face off against Jerry Perez in our main event of the evening. Looking forward to that one. I'm speaking with his brother and trainer, Daquan. Says his man's in great shape, ready to go. Oh, good right hand there from Boca Chica. Like you said, champ, timing him. The million dollar man. You want to be able to catch Palmetta coming in, and he gives you that opportunity. See Boca Chica here having another good round, but what's going to happen in these last 30 seconds? That check hook again. about conditioning playing a factor in this fight. And a lot of times it feels like Palmetta is closing the round strong. You, you see if, oh, right on cue, Chris. But you see right before that, good shots by Palmetta, closing the round strong again, but right before that. Like I was saying, at the end of the round, Palmetta seems to be closing the distance and closing stronger. Another good round for Boca Chica early, but Palmetta comes back with a and big left hand. Tries, tries to steal those champ, but I was going to say right before that last flurry that Palmetta threw, you saw a level change from Boca Chica. He kind of bent down, and it got Palmetta to step back for a second because he has to react. So that's what I'm saying about the subtle things you can do to sort of maintain distance that Boca Chica doesn't do enough, you know? Just a sudden drop of your height a little bit or, or faint a little bit. Palmetta has to react to that, you know? And, and, and it can diminish the pressure in spots if it's mixed with a sharp offense, which when Boca Chica throws, it's pretty sharp. Doesn't do enough of that for me. And Palmetta, last couple of rounds, has finished strong, leaving that lasting impression in the judges' minds. Boca Chica, as we've seen in the last few rounds, comes out strong. Yeah, which in a close round and a close fight, a lot of times that lasting compression could be the difference. Absolutely. Oh, big shot. And good solid jam there by yes. Palmetto. Round nine. Palmetta trying to push up his level of aggressiveness here in these late rounds. And there it is. Over the top. Yep. Sometimes, sometimes Boca Chica has a habit of pushing that jab out instead of snapping it, and it makes it easy to counter, especially if you don't mix it with defense. Like I said, and now Palmetta, a good moment, guys. And Palmetto does a good job of not pawing anything. So when you paw out there, you're allowing him to get within range and hit you with a big shot, especially those eye-catching shots that pack, push the head back, snap the head back of Boca Chica. Exactly, Jim. Good point there. And ProBox TV fans, stay with us after our main event of the evening. We're going to have some back and forth with our fans on YouTube. A little trivia. Somebody's walking away with a $500 prize. So stay with us here on ProBox TV. YouTube, your comments, your thoughts. We'll have a little fun on your boxing channel. Very good round for Alberto Palmetta. Oh, good hook there by Palmetta. 
that's been a good round all. all. Count up ten. Yeah. Yep. Had a burst of energy this round. This is as good a round as he's had. Yeah, usually he's trying to steal the round at the end, but here he's been really taking charge of this entire round. Let's see if Pocachi tries to steal something. Palmetta has definitely set the pace here in round nine. Almost seems like Palmetta was taking some rounds off. Yeah. Saving it for the last two. about it, Chris. It's the kind of fight that it's been. Fight of rounds, a fight of moments. 30 seconds. And if these guys are going to follow the script of these last few rounds, you know Palmetto's going to bring it at the end of this round. There it is. Yeah, he's been trying to get it back since the beginning of the round with Boca Chica at the big moments. Maybe the biggest moments of the fight for Boca Chica. Okay. You, you were predicting the future, champ. I think both these guys are going to think they won. They're going to swing to the final bell. They go the distance. Janelson, Figueroa, Boca Chica, and Alberto Palmetta. Good scrap. I hate to be a judge right now. <laughs> yeah. Come 
almost wish you could get another two rounds just because you separate them better, you know? Yeah. It's, it's, it's we were really hoping true. the second half of the fight would separate them, but not so much as they still kept going back and forth. The recap of the fight. Early on, Palmetto's landing some pretty good left hands. We were saying these guys weren't having trouble finding each other from the opening bell. Back and forth action throughout. Again, I don't think, like, you, like we keep saying, I don't think either guy really separated themselves. Very, very competitive fight. Excellent action. Both men showed why they're here in the main event of Pro Box TV. men walking around the ring. They look confident, but also unsure. Yeah, and even as, a, as we came down the stretch, it was continuous back and forth where Palmetto was trying to win the late part of the rounds. And Boca Chico was winning the earlier part of the rounds. Then Palmetto had a really good ninth round where I, I felt like he dominated the entire ninth round. And then Boca Chica started yep. very well in the 10th. I thought Palmetto closed the 10th very well, but Boca Chica started very, very well in the round 10 with some good left hands there and uh, tried to really take advantage. But of course, he was smothering himself, so he couldn't land the rest of the bigger shots that he wanted to. It's in the hands of the judges as they go the distance in our main event of the evening. Boca Chica and Palmetto. The winner walks away with the WBA Continental America's welterweight belt. The official decision is in. Here's Mark Lichtenfeld. Ladies and gentlemen, after 10 hard-fought rounds, we go to the scorecards. Dennis Devon scores about 97-93. Tito Wilgo and Joanne Richard Boltzi at 96-94 for your winner by unanimous decision. And now, the WBA Continental America's welterweight titleist, Alberto Beto Palmetto! Palmetto by unanimous decision! Chica defeated for just the second time. Paulie will visit with the winner. We're here with the winner, Alberto Palmetta. Se vuelta aquí con el ganador, Alberto Palmetta. La diferencia fue la presión. Was the difference the pressure? Sí, la, la, la diferencia fue la presión. Yo lo dije antes de la pelea que no iba a poder soportar mi presión. El boxeo no se trata de lucir bien, de irte. Él tiraba dos, tres golpes, lucía, cancheriaba. And he said the pressure was the difference. He said, I noticed before the fight that he likes to throw his couple of shots and, and take his time, take his space. The, in boxing, you have to be able to upkeep the pace. And uh, he said, my pressure was the difference. Ahora, una, una, una buena victoria ahora. ¿Qué, qué, ¿Qué viene próximo para ti? Tiene ese título. ¿Qué, ¿Qué cosa hacemos próximo para ti? ¿Qué, qué cosa tú quieres? What do you want next after a, a big victory like this? You got this title, you got ranked. The next thing that I want is keep working hard, keep learning, because we never stop to learn. I, I have to keep improving because I want to be world champion. And I have the best team. The, the, la cosa que quiero hacer es seguir trabajando en el gimnasio, seguir aprendiendo, porque lo que quiero es ser campeón del mundo. Y acá tengo el mejor equipo. Muchas gracias, Alberto. Congratulations. Let, let me say something. I want to I wanna say thank you to everybody. Thank you to ProBox TV. Thank you, Marinari. You are the best, man. It's an honor to stay with you. And thank you, Samson. Let's be world champion, man. Keep crushing me. Gracias, Alberto. Back to you guys. I want Argentina, no solo los huevos. Congratulations, Alberto Palmetta. Winner by unanimous decision. Loves the team in which he is with in West Palm Beach. And Chris, everything that you have seen, everything that you've heard, where you live and where he now trains, 
We saw it in front of us tonight on Pro Box TV. Yeah, I mean, he put it together. Everything that, like I said, we, we've we've been hearing about him in the gyms, and, and he wasn't able to get that big signature win. Well, he got it tonight, and on, on a great platform, Pro Box TV, guys know that they go up from here. So a win here is it means a lot. And having this, this platform to get out to the world is extremely important for these young fighters. Great fight from both guys. Excellent pressure from, from the winner um, in Palmetta. And really, I guess that was the difference. It was the pressure. It was it was the way he closed the rounds. You know, we, we thought that that was going to be an important aspect, and he did that quite well. And Jim, that's a good point, man, because in those close, close fights with nip and tuck, so stealing the rounds and getting the last vision of the judges is really important, trying to steal those key moments in, in the fight. Also, when you can't really tell them apart, sometimes the judge will just go, well, who's coming forward? Who's making yeah, the fight? Yeah. And it was Palmetto who's making the fight the whole time. I thought the fight was very competitive. I wouldn't have really complained if it went either way, but it seems like the pressure and the consistency of Palmetto, like he said, he noticed Boca Chica likes to fight in spots, and I wasn't going to let him fight in spots is what he said. Well, he made sure he tried to do that as much as possible, and it ended up benefiting him with the victory. And that last 10 or 15 seconds in multiple rounds were really a key for the decision going the way of Alberto. Alberto Palmetta in our main event of the evening. Don't forget, we are here every other Wednesday, November 15th. It's a 10-round lightweight main event coming off his victory over then 14-2 Eduardo Estela, the million-dollar man. 16-1 Justin Poldo is right back here on Pro Box TV to fight the Joker. Jerry Perez, who has earned 11 of his 14 professional wins by knockout. Two weeks from tonight, Wednesday, November 15th, right back here on Pro Box TV. Now, don't forget, YouTube, questions, money given away, prizes. We're going to have a little fun after we officially close our Wednesday night fight. So, Pro Box TV fans, viewers, stay with us and we'll go face to face with you when we are complete. What a night of fights. The Cincinnati kid with a knockout very early. G baby. And then one of the most incredible fights we have seen here on Pro Box TV, the former world champion, Angelo Leo, victorious. And then in our main event, Alberto Palmetta leaves with the belt. For my powerful partners, Paulie Molinacci and Chris Algieri, Mike Goldberg saying so long until we see you back for live fights in two weeks on Pro Box TV. Back in a minute to take your questions. First question, Polly. What is As promised, a little bonus coverage and a little chat with our fans out there. Thank you very much for staying with us. Mike Goldberg, Pauli Malignaggi, Chris Algieri. First, first question, Pauli, is perfect for both you and I. It's from Rene Box Young. His question is, what are the differences between bare knuckle 
and pro or gloved boxing, I guess, first as a fighter, and then we can talk about commentary. Um, I think for as a fighter, the main thing is there's more cuts in bare knuckle because it's, 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 it's knuckle to bone, uh, and you even nicking shots will open up kind of big cuts at times, you know? As a matter of fact, if you don't get hit clean, you, you have a better chance actually of getting ripped open because the, the slicing shots cut you open. The other uh, uh, difference that I think is underrated, uh, I, th I found professional boxing to be much more heavier uh, because the professional boxing gloves are too small to protect you when you're receiving blows, but also cushion just enough to allow you to keep, right. keep heavily throwing shots. Bare knuckle, you can only throw so many heavy punches because your hands start to really hurt. So you gotta really mix and match the way you're gonna throw those punches. So as far as o overall damage, Bare knuckle looks worse, but it's safer. Professional boxing actually hurt more. The next day after a professional boxing match, I felt like I got hit by a train, whether I won or lost. But uh, after a bare knuckle fight, uh, at least the one I had, I wasn't really sore, but I was sliced open, you know? Uh, and, and I was mostly with shots that didn't land that clean. So, so it was, it was uh, a difference uh, that I found fascinating. It wasn't, it, it hurt, professional boxing hurts more, I'll put it to you that way. And that is something that people may, may not understand because they'll think, oh, bare knuckle. And again, the hands start to hurt. You can't load them up that often. One or two landed shots in bare knuckle, and already your hands are hurting, especially if you're throwing them like a professional boxer is supposed to when you turn your shots. I learned the hard way. You can't turn your punches. You can't turn your weight into your, all your punches in bare knuckle because you will break your hand. you got to throw them a little bit differently. Yeah, they, they talk about, and, and Paulie and I do BYB Extreme together as well as Pro Box, and I know, Chris, you watch every show. Of course. Uh, of course. And I watch everything you guys do. Well, thank you. I watch everything you do. Oh, so yeah. we're, we're, all, we're all in agreement here. The interesting thing is how the evolution of bare knuckle boxing is taking place and we are seeing the skill set of a boxer being utilized in a bare knuckle bout, but much to Paulie's point, the targets are different. You made a comment earlier about aim for the collarbone to hit the chin. We've had a lot of fighters tell us, Paulie, they don't want to be above the nose because yeah. of the damage it'll do to the hand, Chris. That reminds me of the, I know you're the movie quote guy, but remember the movie Gladiator? Mm -hmm. Not, not, not the, the original not Gladiator. Not the Sparta yeah, one. With Cuba Gooding Jr. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the Cuba Gooding Jr. And, and, and the older guy would just drop mm -hmm. his head so everybody, the bare knuckle guys would break their hands on his forehead. So yeah, absolutely. People don't understand, the, like you said, champ. That that padding and that wrap that we have in a box in a, in a boxing gloves allows you to really turn those punches over. Which is why a lot of MMA guys say, "Man, boxers hit so hard." Yeah. It's because we have the hands that are that are protected. The glove is not for the other guy's face. It's for your hand. It protects yeah, your hands so you can hit, so you can yeah. generate more power and hit harder. Yeah. Well, the, the professional boxing gloves are just small, just just cushioned enough to protect yeah. your hands. You still break them, but it's a little harder, and but not cushioned enough to protect the guy receiving the shot. It allows you to keep loading up heavy punches, and that's why professional boxing, for me, is so devastating and of course the results unfortunately you know you see the most deaths in professional boxing yeah. because because it's it's all strikes and it's all pretty heavy concussive strikes. force it's different and, and that was the transition with MMA as well mm -hmm. is that there was less damage taken consistently with the smaller gloves but the slicing with the bare knuckle is yeah. much like MMA and, with the elbows and also yeah the, the fights in MMA end quicker because there's no 10 count so right. you can be concussed and, and you don't really get a chance to continue because a guy will jump on you and finish mm -hmm. you as opposed to in boxing you might be concussed get dropped and be able to get up and continue and fight for 10 more rounds. And 10 right. fight for 10 more rounds, taking more blows. And, it's, and the other thing is, it's all blows. In MMA, there's a lot of ground fighting. Yep. And even the ground and pound, it's not really weighted shots. It's right. more hammer blows and things like that. There's not a lot of weight on those shots. So again, the damage you're taking to that is concussive is a little bit less. Obviously, all combat is dangerous, but at, unfortunately, the results show in you know the, the amount of catastrophic injuries we have in professional boxing every year, unfortunately. All right, so we have the trivia question for you. And the winner gets $500. Who did Danny Jacobs beat to win the U.S. Amateur Middleweight Championship? You guys cannot answer. Right. So we are going to wait to see who is going to answer that that's correctly. Nice, that's a nice question. All right, we have a guess. Let's see who it is. Is that, is that Tim about to guess? <laughs> <laughs> Tim, do you, <laughs> Tim Bradley with the, with the answer. I have no idea. No. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna, I was gonna guess, but I guess we gotta let people answer first. Right, because some, someone's gonna win 500 go. bucks, right? Somebody's gonna win some, some, What's some up, loot Tim? on this one. <laughs> and Tim, by What's the way, up, Tim great stinking, job man. over the Tim, weekend, Tim. Tim great stinking. job over the weekend. Uh, enjoyed your broadcast. Appreciate it, man. Yeah, great job. Thank you. It's Appreciate actually, it. it's a surprising answer. It is, and, and Tim doesn't even know, and he's the smartest of no, all of us. I have no, no clue. <laughs> I, I got 
a guess. I'm not sure, but I have a guess. Yeah, I was, I was talking to the guys in the back. They, we picked this one because I worked with Danny for five different camps, and yeah. we, we, him and I spoke about this quite a bit. Oh, so you know. Oh, yeah, you know. I knew, <laughs> oh, I knew you right know away. for sure. I'm oh, I know for guessing. sure. Oh, no, no, I know. I know. <laughs> you definitely can't answer. No. All right. Do we have an answer? Do we know who it is? Do you want me to say? I, well, oh, I, I, I see. I see. Hand flow boxing first, review. First, let me answer because I don't know All if I'm right. right. Now, Chris, we know is right. Right, but I think I think we have someone yeah, who's tuning in. Yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah, so have them. How about Sean Porter? Why'd you say that was my guest? <laughs> well, now nobody's gonna believe it. That <laughs> was because well, it's okay. the right answer. Tim, oh, it is. It is right. Oh, it is right. Hold on, right. wait a sec. Tim, help me out I here. I was gonna guess that. Now nobody's gonna believe it. Well, there's have, a tie in. Everything's a tie in the pro this? box. <laughs> okay, wait, 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 Tim. Were we not I talking think... about this for the last three minutes, and now Paulie wants to guess? Come on, man. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Come on, Tim. Tim, Tim calls me. Exactly. Now, now all the fans are going to say, yeah, all right. Just like Tim. See, like, all right, you're going to guess Porter, yeah. So we came up with this because it ties in everybody. I work, I work with Danny. Danny fought Sean, mm -hmm. and Sean works on Pro no, Box no, TV with I us. Knew, I know Sean and Danny fought like a ton of times in the amateur, so yeah. I figured like, God, I mean, maybe it's one of those times that was in the final of the U.S. Championships, you know? Yes. So, Sean Porter, congratulations to our trivia winner. Tim's going to stay with us as we take some questions. Tim, let me throw this one out to you, and we've talked about it before. The effect of Showtime no longer first of the year being in the boxing business. Wow. Um, you know, I was, I was actually towards the back end of when HBO actually had their last show. Um, I remember trying to get a book a fight and, and at that time hbo was just looking for the more household names uh to put on their broadcast um you know and i heard through the grapevine that they were going to be closing up shop and i mean it was saddened i was saddened by the information because showtime you know that they're, they're my family man i started with showtime um pro box tv gave me no excuse me not pro box tv but showbox gave me an opportunity i was the first actual world champion um on on uh, showbox so uh they followed me to to uh england um they put my fight up against with junior witter i ended up winning the world championship there but uh you know and then i graduated to showtime and i remember fighting on numerous occasions on, on showtime as well um you know putting on spectacular performances um but it's i'm saddened by it man um you know they've they've been around boxing extremely long just as just as long if not longer than uh, HBO. Um, the fact that they're leaving the business, it just, I mean, it tells you something. It tells you that I just think the whole overall landscape of, of television is changing. Um, you know, people are no longer really interested in cable. Um, everything is starting to become more digital now. Um, you know, and if you don't change with the times, these type of things can happen. Yeah. And I think that's just what happened with uh, Showtime. Uh, I don't think it has anything to do with Al Heyman or whatever. All these people, you know, they, they assume all this stuff. I just think that it's just a different day and age that we're in now. And, uh, you know, Pro Box TV uh, is, 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 is cutting edge. And, you know, everybody's here on YouTube and we're watching Pro Box TV. That, that is the future right here, what we're looking at right now. And it will continue to grow and get bigger and bigger and bigger over time. Well, may he rest in peace, the great Nick Charles, but believe it or not, Tim, I auditioned for Showbox many, many years ago. I thought it went really well, and as I was walking out the door, Nick was walking in, and I knew immediately that I was not going to get the job. <laughs> I remember Nick. Nick was calling all the bill, all the other yep. Showbox fights. Man. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. Well, now rest you're here with Probox TV and now all Now I'm here so. with, with, with you guys. So let's go with some more questions. Uh, what division do you think has the most potential going forward? Ooh, I mean, we, we, we talk about the, we talk about the lightweights all the time, but a lightweight, we're seeing a lot of those guys migrate up to 140. And I think as as those guys at 135 start to mature, we're going to see them, like you said, Tim, I think 140 is the, probably the, going to be think, the, the deepest division for a while. I think that's an easy question, right? 140 is probably easier. I, I think that it's better to talk about what's anything except 140, right? I mean, 130 pounds is starting to get pretty interesting, right? With Lee mm. Wood, yep. with Shockey Foster with another big win there. Uh, we got Cordina Mick, fighting. Cordina's there. Mick Conlon's still kind of hovering around. 130 is kind of a sleeper good weight class. Not as many superstars. Uh, 140 certainly is the answer to that. Yeah. I, feel. I don't know what Tim feels, champ. I don't know if you no, he said 140 right away. Yeah, 140 as well. Uh, but yeah, I mean, uh, interesting uh, times in boxing. All right, here's a, here's a fantasy one, and, and I have to ask it to you, Tim, because 
get in the ring and spar wants to know who would win in a fantasy fight at 140 between Paulie Malignaggi and Chris Algieri. Oh, you guys always put us against oh, each other. I didn't do it. I didn't do it. If this, if this guy was a real question, fan, he would know question, we already done this. This keeps coming up. If, if, we, if this was a real fan he, and he watched Pro Box TV, he'd know we'd already yeah, covered we this. We did this on sparring session. We did okay, this on sparring session. But let me be test for a moment and get, <laughs> and get the opinion from Tim. Well, you know what? Tim kind of gets to get by because we, we he... We did Chris Sean answered, Chris answered Sean against Tim. So. Okay, no, so no, Tim, I answered Tim against Sean. No, no, what I'm saying was oh. he answered that question. You answered that question. Tim, I think you're... I think Paulie thinks you're going to go with Chris. That's why Paulie isn't giving you a chance uh, to answer. It don't matter. <laughs> I, look, 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 look. Both these guys, both these guys in their prime, they were, they were, they were a handful. Um, I know the toughness of both these guys. I, I think that somebody would eventually have to be uh, the come forward guy. It, you know, Paulie liked to fight off his back foot. He was slick with his jab. You know, moving laterally, you know, left and right. Um, and then you had Algeria as well, who's a tremendous boxer with length and speed, great footwork and combination. So somebody would have to just change it up and abandon what they're used to doing you, you, you'd, and you'd come the forward old. and bring the fight to them. You'd bet and the who old. is that guy? <laughs> I, would, that guy? I would do the I would do the thing we were talking about. I would drop my head so he breaks his hands on my forehead. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I have to deal with a guy with no hands. <laughs> Paulie's hands have been compromised over over the years. All right, here's one that, that goes with what you saw from Francis and Tyson over the weekend, Tim, but also right in your wheelhouse, Chris. And it is a question from Premium Roast Coffee. Can top kickboxers transition to boxing, or is it just fundamentally different skill sets you would know better than anyone. Well, there is a couple of us. Uh, Klitsch, Klitschko, uh, the yeah, Vitaly. Vitaly Klitschko was ISK heavyweight champion. Uh, I was ISK world champion as well, kickboxing. Troy Dorsey was another world champion yeah. uh, kickboxer who became that, a world champion boxer. Tough, man. Very, very tough. Uh, Troy Dorsey, and he was a guy who almost did it almost like, he wasn't a journeyman per se, but he had a bunch of losses that come back to but win. But he had an IBF world title. Yes, he won a world title. Uh, Vitaly Klitschko, myself, and even uh, Lipinets. Lipinets, not a yes. professional kickboxer, but a very high level in Waco, uh, Waco, Waco Tex uh, not Texas, Waco kickboxing. Boxing. So he was a very high-level amateur kickboxer as well. But yeah, in terms of pros, you got um, Vitaly, my, uh, Troy Zoysi, and myself. Yes. And uh, Tim, when you oh. transitioned to what oh. you saw in Saudi Arabia, Look. I've always said an MMA guy who's a striker first, like Anderson Silva, yeah. like we saw from Francis, they have a better chance to work into boxing. Doesn't make them boxers immediately, although Nagano looked pretty darn good. Anderson was a Thai kickboxer. Exactly, and and Muay Thai first. Yeah. Uh, your thoughts, Tim? But the instincts, but the instincts are still the same. Um, you know, MMA guys or UFC guys, they they have more to manage than just hands. So. Actually, going to boxing is a lot easier for them because they ain't got to worry about leg kicks. They don't have to worry about free and big elbows. Well, and Gano got to worry about getting elbows. He got to worry about that career. But I'm just saying, man. I mean, these guys, their eyes are wide open. And it almost seems like they have a sixth sense because they have to worry about so much. And that's what I saw with Engano. Engano had a sixth sense, man. He was, he was, he was, you know, his hands control. And the way he was catching punches and, 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 and defending against punches from Fury was amazing. And that was all due to just combat sports in general. You know, to be a boxer, you just have to be a great athlete, man. You know, if you're a great athlete, you can move left and right and come forward and move backwards and you're really elusive. You can be a boxer, man. You can teach somebody how to box, you know, over time. But it got to, again, he had some somewhat amateur experience. I'm hearing through the great round around five fights he had as an amateur and it didn't go too well. And then that's when he switched over and went to MMA and he found MMA, I believe in Paris is when he started doing MMA. So, um, you know, again, an athlete, if you're an athlete, you can transition. If you did some kind of combat sports, karate, uh, kickboxing, Muay Thai, whatever, like you can transition. It's a lot easier to box than it is to be doing all these other martial arts things but that you have to do when you were an MMA fighter. You're, you're absolutely right, Tim. And, and I was in MMA for 25 years plus. 
two decades with the UFC. And, and every fighter I see, bare knuckle or gloves right now, the bare knuckle guys always say, I don't have to worry about takedowns. I don't have to worry about kicks. I don't have to worry about elbows. I just have to worry about throwing punches and having fun now. Joey Beltran says it all the time. Tim, you made a great point about the awareness. And that was one of the things. I had zero amateur boxing fights. My, my, my first boxing match was my pro debut. And you know, everyone around was like, well, what are you doing? You're going right, in, right into the pros. I'm like, man, I've been fighting without a headgear for, I got 20 pro kickboxing fights. I've fought without a headgear for 20 times. Right. I'm not worried. Of, you know, my awareness, my defense is there. You know, it's when you, combat sports are combat sports, man. Punches are punches. I, I, I fought in boxing levels when I kickbox. So for me, the transition was, was uh, that, that was a real asset. I had also fought in front of big crowds. I knew what it was like to take that walk to the tunnel, you know, through the tunnel into the ring. Those those one-on-one -on -one aspects really carry over. And that's really, I think that's that's something that's often uh, uh, overlooked when you're looking at these high-level kickboxers, MMA guys. They, there's a lot of similarities, a lot of synergies that, that transfer over to the boxing room. I'm, I'm going to go the opposite way. I, I don't think guys like you, Lipinets, Klitschko, and, and Dorsey again are giving yourselves enough credit because honestly, I think it's harder. I think you have to break a lot of habits that you already have yeah. built in in order to come to boxing. And and there's a lot of habits that you may have that are, are deficient, create a deficit for you if you use those habits in boxing. Mainly the footwork, but there's other things as footwork well. Stuff. And I think you have to so it's almost like when somebody thinks a habit already, I'd rather have a blank paper than something with a bad habit because a bad habit is like breaking cement with a jackhammer, bro. You know what I mean? It's a lot harder to change that habit around before you can sort of start from scratch and go to the forefront. So I think guys like Dorsey and, and Chris Algieri and Lipinets and Vitaly Klitschko have to be given more credit because I think that's harder. I think it's much harder. Yeah, you got you see guys coming around all the time. I grew up in Gleason's gym. A lot of kickboxers used to come. A lot of the guys you know. Yeah. All of them were tough. I, I did. All that of them hard. were tough. All of them were good. But only Chris Algieri became world champion. Right. You can make a living in boxing from kickboxing. You can maybe come in and be, maybe get some paydays, be a tough journeyman. But to go from world class, to be go world class kickboxing, to world class boxing, dude, I think that's harder. Because you got to break a lot of habits and recreate new habits. You know well, I will tell you one thing, Tim. I would not want well, to be a boxer who faced off with Alistair Overeem either. Because go back a decade, and you're talking about the same powerful man that you witnessed do what he did against Tyson Fury in Saudi Arabia this weekend. The same genes, the same training, the same striker, the same aggressive mentality. Well, well, there's something about being unconventional. You know, I agree with Polly and what he's saying. I mean, it makes total sense. But being unconventional and some of, not breaking some of those bad habits can actually help you. I mean, we've seen guys like, uh, what's his name, Lopez, uh, you know, the 126-pounding champion, the IBF 126-pounding. Um, you know, very un un unconventional mm -hmm. with his style. You know, leaps in with shots. Remind me of some of the Prince I've seen. You have uh, Navarrete, another guy, very unconventional. You know, um, long arm, and very even, awkward. And even Vitaly, Vitaly, Vitaly was yeah. kind of awkward. Yeah, man. Dr. Dr. Iron Fist, right? Yeah. It was very, very Vitaly, unconventional. Mr. Mayor, of strong. Mr. Mayor of Kiev yeah. now. You know, <laughs> you know, it's a funny, yeah. funny uh, technical aspect. In kickboxing, you don't jab because guys can kick underneath it. And it, so it opens up your, your rib cage very easily. So you don't jab much in kickboxing. You use your, your, your feet to get inside. And then if you're a good puncher, you punch. Like a steep kick? When I, yeah. The, dude, you'll break no, your rib. No, not the teeth You'll break, you'll break your rib with one of those things. So the, that was the thing that, and I had a good jab boxing because all I worked was my jab because I was like, I got to learn this thing. This is this is what boxing is, and I don't have one because I never needed one. I really got to find one. Teep and tie is foot jab. Tim Bradley, I finally get a chance to visit with you. Absolute honor. Thanks for coming in for the extra showtime tonight, my friend. Thanks, man. I appreciate you guys, man. Love the show, man. Keep it up, guys. Thank, thank you. Thank Glad you, to Jim have you as Tim. part of the family. All right, well, let's finish on this one very quickly because someone asked about inactivity mm. of boxers in, in long periods of time off. Our answer is Pro Box TV is here to eliminate those things. <laughs> oh, yeah. Come to Pro Box. Angel Leo found us. Look, Every look two at, weeks. Look Every two moments. weeks. Every two weeks. We can keep you busy. The A and the other A side always here on Pro Box TV. We appreciate all of your questions. We appreciate Tim Bradley joining us. And for the Magic Man, Paulie Malinaji, Chris Algieri, Mike Goldberg saying so long from this form of chat here on Pro Box TV. We'll see you in two weeks, everybody.